Man, so you, just to get a little perspective, you've never had anything other than a stock one, correct? Correct. It's unreal. Jeez. I am so excited to share with you guys all the new stuff that's happening with Jake's bike. Finally getting this thing together. Before we get into it, I want to let you guys know that I just dynoed our base setup at 24 horsepower. I was so happy with that. 24 horsepower on a Ruckus is amazing. Coming from, I think they make like six stock. It, oh man, they are a riot. I wish I could explain to people how fun they are to ride, but the video I posted up was of the Grom. Nonetheless, it's the exact same setup as far as the motor, controller, power output, all that. So highly recommend if you guys haven't seen the dyno video. I'm not lying, they're fast, they're powerful. Highly recommend. But anyways, back to Jake's bike. Lots and lots of progress. I'm finally, I'm so excited. I'm finally able to start building. We officially got everything welded up. I had this massive, really beefy mount for the middle of the shock so that we could do a center mount on it, mainly because I wanted to run the center mount down to the motor and then straight up to the frame. So I ran a three quarter inch steel plate that we cut out to a bar that we wanted exactly the size to fit. Started welding the rear frame, got that all together. My buddy Drew over at Redbeard Welding hooked me up with that. He does awesome work, so I'm so thankful to have him on my side. But if you're in the greater Northeast Ohio area and need welding, highly recommend Drew Redbeard Welding. He does great, great work. So we got that all welded up. I went ahead and had him tack many different areas just to make sure it was really overly strong. I'd rather it not fail, right? <laughs> and then uh, we went ahead and powdered that. Met with this awesome dude. I've been meeting so many awesome people lately with this build, which is super cool. He runs a powder coating and hydrographic shop. So so that's super wicked that if I ever needed hydrographics work, highly recommend them. Precision, powder coating, and hydrographics. They're out of Lakemore, I believe. It's like the greater Springfield Township area in Ohio. And so now as it sits, I have a frame that's ready to go. The only other thing that we had to do before all that uh, backtracking is I had to press the bushings out, which if you've ever powder coated a ruckus frame, this honestly is my least favorite part is pressing those stupid bushings. And again, talking about people that have really helped during this build, Wingman Garage, Aaron, shout out. You were appreciated, thank you so much. I went to Wingman just to press out those bushings and it went super smooth just because I don't have the right bushing press. The one that he has specifically has like the perfect long rod that I can run through both sides of the frames. If you've ever pressed these bushings out, you know it's a pain in the butt. It makes things way easier. So over the last, I don't know, two months or so since Jake's dropped off this bike, I've just been amassing parts and amassing parts. Well, I'm finding to the point where we have officially everything in place to go ahead and get building. So I think on the next video, I'm just going to basically post a start to finish of the build and all these time lapses and hopefully not make it too unbearably long, but just make it to where you can follow along from a bare frame all the way up to essentially where it's rideable on the road. And so I think it's going to be wicked to finally, finally put it together for him. I've been kind of queuing everything along the way for him. Another thing that I... <laughs> I put in there that I surprised him with was I made these little awesome plates. Shout out to Evan, FLP Parts, made these blanks for me. Essentially what it is, is they're little blanks that go over the battery light and the fuel light on the stock ruckus and the battery box so that I can engrave it and make something cool out of it. So with his, I put E-Ruck and then I put his E-Ruck's name, which is Nyx, N-Y-X. Really happy with how it came out. He's ecstatic about it because I kind of surprised it. I didn't tell him that I was going to do that until it was pretty much the day of and then I was like, well, he is paying me to do this build, so I want to make sure he likes it before I'm just like, hey, by the way, I took the liberty of changing uh, something that you had no idea about, and hopefully you like it. Here you go. <laughs> but no, he loves it. I did, I did eventually show him just because I wanted to make sure, and it came out awesome. So it's been a long time coming. I think I gave him a timeline of three months initially, and as it sits, it's been about two and a half. We're right on target with that. And also, pending everything goes well with the test rides, that means that kits will be available realistically around month's end here at the end of July. And super excited just to dole those out. I know we've had a lot of people asking about it. Oh God, FedEx, please don't hit me today. If you're wondering, this E-Ruck is also for sale. Nine five, nine grand, five hundred, ninety five hundred dollars. It's way cheaper than if you were to build one. I can promise you that. And honestly, I should sell it for more, but I want to get rid of it to make room for other stuff. Just more things. Oh, 
<laughs> Talking about more fun things, I picked up a really fun Honda project to go ahead and swap. Went over to my buddy's house having a baby bash. She's having a baby. Woo! Congrats, dude. And I rode around this little Moto 4 Parker. His buddy Parker brought it over. And essentially what this party ended up being was all the guys that came dressed as dads were just there to have a good time. Brought all these different bikes and quads and all this other fun stuff just to mess around in the woods with. So it ended up that I was riding around a little Moto 4. If you're not familiar with Moto 4s, they're real tiny. I mean, this thing comes up to like my kneecap. They're really not made for adults, but they're, <laughs> it's a little, I think it's 80 cc's, uh, no suspension whatsoever. So it's just 80 cc's of raw power just ripping through the woods and it jumbles you all around. I loved this thing. So I went ahead and bought a Honda TRX 90, which really was perfect because my daughter wanted to get a dirt bike. So that kind of bridges the gap for that. And I'm going to electric swap it. So the goal there was that when the motor goes bad, I'm going to go ahead and throw an electric motor, uh, just like I do the swaps on these, and just go ripping through the woods on it. So it'll be a torque monster. The only problem with that is I had planned on doing it when the Honda motor dies. Well, this Honda motor is now 25 years old, and it's still running very, very well. Mind you, that doesn't have a battery <laughs> at all. It's a pool start, and so, like, you start it and literally go. It's wicked. I cannot believe that it's still running. However, for all I know, this thing's going to still stay running for the next five, ten years. So <laughs> the goal there is to swap it eventually, but I also don't want to rip it out, rip out the good motor if it's still running. So so I don't know. We'll see. Maybe it'll end up being a winter project if I get bored or whatever. But yeah, really excited about that. So there's a lot of stuff happening. <laughs> oh, also, I'm also doing an upgrade on the pink Grom. So the eGrom, as I stated earlier, put out about 24 horsepower. I'm upgrading the controller on the pink Grom. The battery is already well supported. I'm going to try to shoot for about 30 kilowatts on that. Oh man, am I excited about that. Let me tell you. Woo! I, I cannot express to you how fast 24 horse feels or how quick it is on a little Grom frame, let alone 40. Man, is that going to be wicked. So I should have that motor at the end of the week. Hopefully, if everything goes according to plan. There's so many things that I have to look forward to that I'm so excited to share with you all. And I appreciate you guys. Oh, we just hit 3,000 subs, guys. Three grand. I'm so happy. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so much. If you haven't already, shoot me an email, 3cmwcontent at gmail. I'll be happy to send you out a sticker pack of all the bikes. Yeah, I am so thankful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I cannot say that enough. It's never been about subs. It's never been about money. However, it makes it way more enjoyable that now I can actually essentially buy myself coffee every now and again just off of YouTube videos. So super thankful for every one of you. And I cannot express that enough. Oh, I love these bikes so much. It's just, I don't know. I love the Egroms. I love the Erux. They're all fun. Anything electric is fun, but something about the Ruckus platform. The fact that this thing was stock 49cc, you're struggling. I weigh, I'm almost six foot. I'm like 5'11". And I weigh, what, 230 or so? And I would say I'm about your average rider for a ruckus. It's all you can do to do, like, 35 not tucked. If you're tucking, maybe you'll get lucky and do, like, 40. So the fact that with the e-swaps, you can easily do 55 cruising around and hit all these byways that are normally 55, 60 without issue. I mean, if you guys have seen the past videos, I've gotten this thing up to, I think it's, like, 88, 85, somewhere in there. And it does so just fine. The idea of having all of that torque and the power and the ability to just get out of your own way and to be safe. Oh, I got to share it with everybody. I need to do it. <laughs> it's so much fun and I love it. Another thing we did on Jake's bike, which I'm super excited to test out, is we're running one brake lever to no brake at all. So what it's going to be is strictly a regen brake. So when you hit that, it works off of the motor, so you don't actually need a caliper or anything, and that helps regen the battery. And in theory, it's going to make range even better than this setup, because these actually work off of your brake. It cuts out the brakes altogether. I'm really excited to see how that turns out. Obviously, you need to test it, but in theory, it should work amazing. So right now, I'm currently en route. I'm going to go to B-Dubs. Super excited to go get some munch, some buffalo wild wings. I told my daughter that my wife and my kids are going to meet us there. So I need to get a vlog for this week and just share with you guys the progress, because we're making progress, baby. But anyways, back to B-dubs. <laughs> They're doing all-you-can-eat starter apps. My daughter absolutely loves the mozzarella sticks, so she's going to get some of those all-you-can-eat. She's going through a cheese stick phase. If you guys have kids, you know, pizza, mac and cheese, cheese sticks, grilled cheese, really anything with cheese <laughs> seems to be the kid go-to. And I'll be honest, I'll smash on some mozzarella sticks too. Nonetheless, we're en route over there. Also going to go to Thrill Point, which is pretty much right next door, motorsports store, and check in on a helmet 
because I want to get some off-roading helmets for the new quad. Since we're going to be ripping, I don't want to get our normal helmets that are on-road all disgusting. And then maybe go see about picking up another quad just because you can't only have one, right? You gotta... <laughs> what are you going to do with just one? <laughs> oh man, it's so fun. I love it. If you guys have not heard me say it before, I am all about the memories. If not for memories or making memories, why are we living? Highly recommend, go out, do something, make those memories and just make life worth it. Don't sit idle, you know, it's too easy to be complacent and just fall into a rut and just, you know, get lost in the complacency of day in, day out. Break that cycle, man, break it. It is, you gotta, you only get one life and I hate to preach, but gotta live it and have fun and make memories and do with it what you can because you only get one shot. It's been such a long time coming though to finally be able to dig into Jake's bike. I've just been waiting, waiting and waiting and waiting, accumulating parts, doing prototypes and different things. And it's just cool to see that all come to fruition and to be able to just start actually hammering away on it. Cause the R and D of developing and prototyping those different parks is what takes the longest. Once you get all that managed, literally it's a matter of a couple days, maybe to actually build it. It's quick. It goes very fast. Whoop, whoop. And I always hate working in the road like that. So if you guys aren't familiar, I clean trash cans for a living. People suck. You know, you gotta really pay attention to traffic around you because the amount of people that are just dumb. Like I'll, I'll use cones, I use strobes, I'll do all that. And the amount of people that just literally try to kill me on a daily basis. You gotta just actively try not to die. And it sucks, but it is what it is. Okay, I'm gonna get over here so we can go get beat ups. Woo! Yum. If you're wondering why this vehicle keeps popping up in front of me, it's because it's my wife and kids. Yay! Our one daughter is in a wheelchair, so we converted our Telluride, which, by the way, if you guys ever need conversions, I know we're a major minority, but Freedom Motors out of, I think they're Michigan, did that for us. And it's awesome. Like her wheelchair just goes up in the back right there and it's super neat, folds down, makes it easy because we didn't want to side lift because the way those kind of come up and down. If you've ever looked at handicapped parking spots, people do not park well in them at all. And generally speaking, the handicapped cars are always the ones that are banged up. So we didn't want that at all. Uh, so this allows us to kind of be a little bit more safe and be able to, you know, get, again, not get hit, not get damaged, all that stuff. Yay, B-dubs, woo! Highly recommend them though, backtracking. If you guys ever do need modifications, they did great work. I know we did that, uh, I don't know, probably about a year ago. Very, very happy with it. I still need to get it undercoated, but you know, work in progress. We're almost there. The last B-dubs, woo! -hoo. Take out parking only. Park next to this Jeep, I bet they have ducks. Wow, this is the only Jeep I've ever seen that doesn't have ducks in it. Good job, Jeep owner. So yeah, folding ramp, highly recommend. Say hi, Rowan. Say hi, YouTube. Hi, YouTube. Woo! So yeah, it's her daughter's chair, and uh, yeah, it's a good time. Anyways, we'll see you guys on the next one. Have the best day ever. Say bye!